This week in New York, members of the United Nations Security Council met for the first time to discuss the growing threat posed by artificial intelligence to international peace and stability. The UN's Secretary General called for a watchdog to act as a governing body that would regulate, monitor, and enforce AI regulations. And as concerns over artificial intelligence continue to grow, our next guest says there's a similar problem with our children and social media. Democratic Senator Chris Murphy is warning in the New York Times that due to a lack of regulation, algorithms are making kids desperately unhappy. And Senator Murphy joins us now. You know, we've talked a lot about teens and the data out there that shows that suicidal ideation, depression, anxiety is plaguing our teens uh, and, and in many cases gr young girls in developing minds um, as they become addicted to social media and influenced by social media and made to feel less than by social media. Now we're seeing that it's not just teens, it's kids? Yeah, this is an epidemic that is really hitting our kids regardless of age. Um, it's not just teenagers that are on social media. We know that even though these sites say that they don't let anybody under 13 on, whether it be Instagram or TikTok or YouTube, there are plenty of young kids on these sites as well. And what we've seen is an epidemic of young people who are reporting intense feelings of loneliness, are withdrawing from social connection, and are often um, uh, having suicidal ideations. And there's just not a coincidence between that rise in loneliness and sadness and the social media age. Uh, and so what I wrote about in this piece is, you know, one of the uh, real problems with social media being that uh, this algorithm, which sort of feeds kids content and connection on a conveyor belt, is robbing from kids one of the real rituals of childhood, which is discovery, exploration. This search for things that you're interested in and people you want to connect with. When that connection and when those interests are just fed to you by an algorithm on a smartphone, um, you are robbed of that really important exercise of going out and discovering for yourself what you're interested in. And I think that's part of what is driving kids' unhappiness today, the fact that they are just being delivered content and interests and hobbies and connection on their phones rather than going out and doing the work that often provides you with more value when you find something that really interests you or you find a connection that is really meaningful. It's that, it's that effort that often makes it even more fulfilling once you make that connection. Senator, good morning. As the parent of two teenagers, I appreciate your persistent attention to this issue. It is so serious for so many families across the country. Uh, I'd like for you to tell our audience more, if you would, about that 90-minute conversation you had with a bunch of teenagers in suburban Connecticut. And what's so, I don't know if it shocked you because you're aware of the problem, but it's, it, it threw you back on your heels a little bit, some of the things you heard. And then off that, what you think some solutions might be. Of course, a lot of it falls to us parents to have our kids put the phone down and go out and do some of that discovering you're talking about, but what else can be done to attack this problem? So it was that conversation that caused me to write this piece for the New York Times. And um, I was talking about a piece of legislation that I've introduced with Senator Schatz, Senator Cotton, Senator Britt, uh, and that bill does three things. It requires uh, parental consent for teenagers to be on social media. It requires age verification to actually make sure that kids under 13 aren't getting on these sites like TikTok. But it also bans the use of the algorithm for teenagers, um, meaning that you can't use your swipe history in order to continue to perfect content, which often is sending kids down really dangerous rabbit holes because kids are often swiping uh, on pretty disturbing content. I thought it was gonna be the parental consent provision that um, was uh, most concerning to these kids, but it wasn't. It was the ban on the use of the algorithm. These kids were really dependent on the algorithm and they really couldn't envision a world in which they had to expend effort to find content that they were interested in, 
Google search to these kids was way too onerous in their minds, and they were really scared of the fact that TikTok or YouTube might not just be delivering them content tailored for them, and they feared that they would be more unhappy if they had to do that work. Of course, the evidence is exactly to the contrary. The evidence is that a decade ago, when teenagers actually had to do more work uh, to find things that they cared about or to make connection with peers, that they were actually happier, uh, that they were less lonely. A and that part of the conversation really scared me. It just convinced me that these kids today um, have become addicted to the algorithm, have become addicted to these platforms, and, and they don't know what they're missing. It just made me feel that the legislation that we've introduced, getting rid of that algorithm for kids under uh, 18, is even more important than we had thought when we first introduced it. Senator Murphy, uh, uh, I agree with you on the altruisms and, and your concerns. But let me ask this. How, how do you deal with uh, not in any way impeding someone's right to free speech, right to decision, or even as a parent uh, looking like you're dictating to your kids? Because I remember I, I joined civil rights activism when I was 12, 13, and the more uh, my mother was concerned, the more I wanted to do it. So how do you balance it where you're doing what is absolutely uh, 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 needed for a lot of these young people without incurring their resentment or them saying that you are stepping on their rights? Yeah, I, I think that's a really important question. Um, and there are plenty of other examples in society in which you need parental consent for a child uh, to participate in an activity, uh, to have access to a technology. Of course, there are plenty of technologies that we just decide are not appropriate for children that you ha can't have access to until you're 16 or 18. So I do think there's plenty of examples here where we do give parents uh, some rights. And so, you know, to me, parents in this country are really clamoring to, you know, be empowered to have a conversation with their children about when their children are ready to be on social media. And because right now um, that parent has no right, and in fact, the social media companies make no effort to keep the really young kids off of these sites, yep. um, the social media companies are in charge, not the parents. Senator Chris Murphy, thank you. Thank you for staying on this, and uh, we appreciate your being on the show this morning. Thank you.